Okay, so we are going to talk all about Summit tonight. We want to share with everybody um, some takeaways, some of the new announcements, and just kind of try and, I don't know, it's really hard to pass on the energy that's actually at Summit if you're not there, but we can at least share our takeaways and hopefully you can kind of feel the excitement that we all feel we were there because it was pretty awesome. I would say from my perspective, it was the best one that I have been to. Um, I think for a couple reasons, it was closer to home. So for any of you in Ontario, if you're thinking about going next year, it's like so easy to drive there. It was like six hours, six and a half hours with stops. Um, Everything was less expensive there, I think. Like hotels were less expensive, food was less expensive. Everything just seemed less expensive. And all the venues were really close together. So if you haven't been to a summit before, this won't make any difference. But the other summits in the past, everything has been really far apart. So it has felt like non-stop, like there was just no downtime. So I really appreciated that there was, um, you know, time to kind of go and have dinner with each other or hang out in the lobby. There just wasn't really time to do that before. So I enjoyed spending a lot of, as much time as I could with everybody. Um, you know, I obviously didn't spend as much time as I would like, but um, sometimes that is impossible. I'm just trying to make sure everybody's muted here. Okay, so for me, some major, major takeaways. Um, I hope you guys will take the time to watch the summit recordings because honestly, they were gold. Some highlights for me were Bonnie Engel's um, chat and they're all on YouTube. So one person that I know has pretty much everything is Scotty Hobbs. So if you want to write his name down, his YouTube channel, he has pretty much everything uploaded. Um, they might not be 100% great quality, but you know what? It doesn't matter. He's just taken his camera and uh, recorded them. But Bonnie Engel, Melanie Mitro, Aaron Hopkins, if you are still dealing with fear issues, you should really watch hers. She did amazing. She's a newer coach. Um, and I think that's always one of the takeaways I come with, home with is, and to be honest, guys, I still have fear surrounding this every single day. So if you think that I'm here four years later and just like pump out the posts and don't give a shit, you're wrong. I have a situation today where I felt super uncomfortable. Um, I, I just met a person at a store and honestly, it's probably me overreacting, but I felt like she totally dodged me. And I felt like, oh my God, does she think I'm going to try and get her to buy Shakeology or something? That's exactly how I felt. And it made me feel really uncomfortable. Like for a short 15 minutes, like I let it get into my head. So don't think that that doesn't still happen to me. But what I remembered is all the stuff I heard at Summit and all the amazing things that this has done for me. And I know that I do not peddle Shakeology. I've never asked her to buy Shake. Like there's no reason that was just my imagination kind of going in overdrive. But when you come home from an event like that, you're just so focused on your mission of what you want to do. And if you truly believe in this stuff, and that's a question you have to ask yourself, do you truly believe in this, truly believe in the products? Are you being a product of the product? I talked to some coaches that feel frustrated that they're not, you know, where they want to be. And I think that's one question you have to ask yourself is, A, where is your belief in this? Like, really, where do you stand for your belief? And two, do you have a, short, a story to share? We are a health and fitness company. You, like, no one needs to be at their goal weight. No one needs to have six pack abs, but you have to have a health and fitness story. 
You have to be heading towards something and always working on bettering yourself, whether that's your health, and that can be up here, it can be just nutrition wise, and your, your, your body, your fitness. Now, luckily we have 2B Mindset now, so if fitness isn't your jam, you can make nutrition your jam and talk about that and go in the right direction. One of the biggest reasons I'm a coach is to stay accountable to, to myself. Like I don't wanna put 80 pounds back on. And I guarantee if I did not have all of you guys and this company and the products that they keep bringing us and the new programs they keep bringing us, I would definitely have, I can probably almost guarantee I'd have my weight back on. Like I can pretty much guarantee it or I'd still be in a really nasty cycle. But if you feel like you're not seeing the results, you feel like you're doing everything, you're, you're doing your power hours and you're doing your vital behaviors and you're pumping out posts and you're really being honest with yourself that you're doing all the right stuff, you're inviting, is your story strong enough? Do you need to work on your health and fitness story so you feel more confident in sharing? Because I can tell you when I'm on my game, when I feel really good, I have no trouble sharing anything on social media. But if I'm a little off and I'm feeling a little like, oh my gosh, how can I be sharing health and fitness and I can't even get my shit together, you're not as confident in your posts. And that all resonates on your posts. So those are the things I came away with. Um, fear, if you're feeling fear, you just need to listen to the recordings. You really you need to listen to those people, those amazing top coaches that shared their stories and you'll relate to them and you'll also feel inspired by them. So I am just going to call, actually, I'm not going to call out. Can anyone that was at Summit pop on one at a time and just give their takeaways? Yeah, I can go. Yeah. Okay. Carla's going to go. Thanks, Carla. Okay. So... For me, obviously, Summit was a little bit different um, because I did classic. So it was a, this my fourth Summit, and this one was um, different to a degree, but yet um, I still had the same rejuvenation that I always get when I go to Summit. So for me, um, Summit was basically the climax of kind of a plan that I've been putting in place because exactly what Michelle talked about, even though um, I feel like I am really always on the A game with my health and fitness. I still lack confidence in, in, with some of the people who I was talking to because I enjoy talking to um, people who are already in fitness. And that's just the conversations that flow really naturally for me. But I still felt like I wasn't, I was comparing myself. I was playing the comparison game and I wasn't feeling confident enough in our products um, to talk to them. So my whole point um, of doing classic or one of the reasons there was numerous emotional reasons I did it as well. But one of the um, business related reasons that I did classic was strategy for me, because I wanted to push myself to the like, limits to get as in shape as I could using our products so that I could feel 100% confident um, talking about our products. So not that I didn't believe it. I believed it. I just felt like I needed to prove it. And so that was kind of part of my strategy of doing, um, doing classic was so that I feel like I can talk to anybody. Now I can talk to the mom who's just starting out. I can talk to someone who just needs help with nutrition. I can talk to, you know, the, the, the fit people, the gym goers now, and that might not necessarily be, Ugh, be like our market as in the products because they have routines they do but those are the people who I think would make awesome coaches that I would want to work with um, but where um, I think some it helps me the most is having the belief in coaching having the belief in what we actually do we can look online and we can see people using the products and we use our products so we know our products work but when you go to summit and you hear the stories the success stories and you hear how 
how coaching has changed people's lives. That's what really resonates with me because financially um, coaching has never necessarily been um, the financial reasons haven't been my why. And I think I said this last year when I came away as well, and it hit me again, is that it's the reminder to me that this can help somebody else financially. So even if it's not necessarily um, what I need right now financially, it's me realizing that I need to share the opportunity because I can still help somebody else who needs it financially. And just like you go there and there's so many coaches and you see that anybody can do this. There's every like size, shape, like age, everybody, anybody can be a coach and anybody can be successful with it if you like stick with it. Um, for me, my favorite pre presentation was the Sean, what's his name, Anchors or whatever his name was. That was the one, the happiness one that I posted the other day. Um, and same as kind of what I posted in the group the other day. Um, I feel like it's so important to, for all of us to find the joy in the journey and not always be looking towards the end. So whether it's the coaching, the journey of coaching, enjoying it every day and enjoying building the business, not just waiting to think about the success of coaching at the end and in our fitness as well, not just thinking about, I want to get to my goal weight, enjoying the process, enjoying to like learning to eat healthy and enjoying to like learn to like enjoy your workout. And the more you can make it a part of your life, then the more you'll enjoy it. And I think that's why we need to share coaching because that's what helps us all to enjoy the journey because every aspect of it makes it surround, it surrounds you like 24 seven. And the more you surround yourself and like engulf yourself in something, the more you become obsessed with it. And, and I think that's a good thing. So that's my takeaway. That's awesome, Carla. And let me tell you, we were all so proud of you. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing what you did. And it also gives us that authority now. You know, we have someone that we saw use our programs and our products and, and we can, like, we can all use that. You can be confident if someone wants to get into like bikini model shape, they can do it with our products. So it was, that was really a cool highlight for, I think for all of us there. So that was awesome. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to go next? Michelle, I'll go. Cause I don't know what's going to happen out here. So <laughs> I better just get this over with. Um, okay. I mean, I have like, notes and notes of takeaways. So I'm going to just try and maybe talk about something that maybe nobody else will touch on because I'm sure a lot of us had a, the same takeaways. But for one, this was my second summit. Um, it was hands down like 150% better than last summit. I think it was just the closeness of, of us all. Like I felt like we were we weren't just there like individually. I felt like we were really there as a team. Like, I think that is just, it was just such a strong community of us and it really felt connected and really good. And it was just so much more fun because of that. Um, where did I write it? Okay, so just a couple, a couple things and they're not like mind blowing, but I think they are all things that we can kind of take with us and, and apply to our business. So one thing that I just quickly wrote down in, I don't know where, but I just read it right now and I thought I would mention it. It's okay to brag on yourself. Like that is something that we should be doing as coaches is bragging on ourselves. Like if you have challengers that are rocking this, talk about that, whether it's in your stories or in your posts or live videos, but like brag on yourself. If you have hit a rank advancement or if you have earned your highest paycheck or if you have signed up a coach on your team, you guys need to be sharing all these little tiny milestones. If you helped someone get started with a challenge pack today, you should be sharing that because that is gonna be creating that FOMO, right? And it also gives you credibility. And credibility is something that we all need to have as coaches, because if we can be showing other people that we are good at what we do, 
even if it means we've only signed up one other person in our whole career and that one person happens to be our husband, nobody else know, needs to know that, but it gives us credibility. And I'm not saying, you know, start lying about the things that we do, but definitely share the successes you have had so that people will want to join you because you already know what you're doing and you're, and you're good at doing that. Um, and then another thing that I thought was interesting was, um, you know, to really talk about this as a business. I think it's easy for us when we're talking to potential coaches to like kind of downplay what is involved with this. And I am like completely guilty of that as well. And I'll often say, as we all do, you know, you share your journey, you connect with other women, um, you know, like it's post about your food and your workout and like that sounds super easy. And if it were that freaking easy, we'd all be like superstar diamonds, right? But we all know that it is a lot more than that. And it is a lot of hard work. And there are a lot of ups and downs with this business. Is it rewarding? Absolutely. Can it change your life? Absolutely. But it does take work and we sell things. That was one thing that they said was like, you sell, you're, you're a seller, like you are selling product. So you have to be okay with the fact that you, yes, you're helping people, but we freaking sell challenge packs and we sell Shakeology and there's nothing wrong with that. Like that's okay. We don't need to sort of like hide you know, behind the trees and pretend that we're not selling anything because we are selling something. So we should be proud of that as well. Um, it kind of reminded me all this, all, also of like to be mindset, right? Like it's so easy for us to be like, it's, you know, eat whatever you want. And yes, that is the program and the idea of the program, just like, you know, coaching is share your journey. But we all know a to be mindset. If you freaking just eat whatever you want, you're going to gain 10 pounds. And if you just simply share your journey on social media, you have a hobby. So I thought that was just really good. And it, it's just something super simple, right? But it kind of just, it made sense to me and it really clicked in my brain. So that was kind of my, yeah. the, the, I mean, I, ha I could seriously do like a two hour call on takeaways, but I know everybody else will have some really great ones too. So yeah. those are two that I had written down as well. Definitely the, and I mean, I've changed how I talk to people about this now too, because what happens when you talk to people, like it's all fun and games, you don't get coaches that want to work and then you're frustrated and you waste your time. So there's a whole difference between a VIP member and a discount member that you're signing up to so they can enjoy the discount. That is one thing. But if you are building a team and you're looking for working coaches, you want workers because you know how hard this is. Just like I said in my live video, I mean, I shared most of my takeaways yesterday in my live video. Um, you know, would you be that proud of something that didn't take some work? Like I sure wouldn't. I like to work. Like I, I actually love working. I love the the feeling I get when I help someone and it was maybe a little tough to not convince but share everything with her so I could make her comfortable in joining like that's part of the really cool thing about this so you can't fudge your way through it because if you do that's exactly what you're going to get if you post what you post is what you'll get just remember that what you post about is exactly what you're going to attract so yeah, I thought it was very funny when she said, we share, we just share. And it's true. We share our journey. But like at the end of the day, you're selling something just like I sold hairspray every single day. There's no difference. Why would I be embarrassed about selling something that's going to do a lot more than a bottle of Fermata from Aveda? Like this is doing a lot more good in the world than hairspray, which I sold for 25 years and did a good job at that too. So you don't have to be embarrassed about selling something, you know, if it's working for you, why wouldn't you tell people? It's just like, if you go to a restaurant and you love it, you tell all your friends, why do we get so nervous to tell people about this? So thanks Megan. Okay. Who wants to go next? I'll go be just because I think Bexton's going to start freaking out on me. <laughs> um, so I guess, 
the one one big takeaway that I had was um, something some of the speakers talked about, which is kind of find your fight. A bunch of them talked about that that key buzzword, like we talk about you know knowing your why and figuring out your why. But it, when I don't know why, but this for some reason this summit, like when when the speakers talked about find your fight, that resonated more with me than find your why. Like you need to figure out when the going gets tough, like what are you willing to fight for? And I know for me, like I've struggled with that in the last little bit because I'm not somebody that wanted an exit strategy from my job or, you know, is, you know, financially needed this, this business opportunity. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people out there that do. And um, I know all the, the amazing things that it's brought to me over and above the financial side of things. Um, just being accountable to your goals and having a team of people to kind of help you through the fitness. Like I'm not a health and fitness person, which is hilarious and I'm a coach. So I kind of feel like an anti-coach sometimes because um, I hate working out and I hate eating well. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think that a lot of people can relate to that. And so I'm struggling through that with a new baby and a toddler and, you know, a busy life. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that feel like they also can't get their shit together. So why should they even try? And I'm kind of proof that, you know, you might not ever be perfect at it. Um, and you might still binge eat, <laughs> even though you don't want to, but at least there's tools that you have and there's people around you that can really help. So the whole find your fight, like really, I didn't like really get down to what your why is was really a big takeaway from for me, um, the summit. And then the, one of the speakers talked about um, kind of the story, the miracle of the mangroves. And it was this, um, this gentleman, I don't even know what he was doing there, but he was, I don't even know where he was, to be honest, <laughs> I don't remember, but he was essentially going through the mangroves in, I don't know, let's say Florida, and all of a sudden, all of these, um, he thought he was hit by lightning, because there was like a huge lightning, um, lightning storm, and then a couple of minutes later, another like lightning bolt hit the, hit the same tree, and then three minutes later, like another, and he's like, holy crap, like how did this, how did lightning hit the same spot like three, four, five times? And then he realized that it wasn't lightning. It was actually fireflies. And the fireflies were lighting up at the exact same time. Um, so I'm going to like totally butcher the story. Um, but just like go and look at the happiness, um, the happiness speaker that Carla posted on the team page that uh, presentation talks like he explains the whole thing but essentially the reason why fireflies light up is to procreate like to to reproduce and so they usually do it what like they don't all show their, show their lights off at the same time because like they're trying to attract a mate so why would they why would they want to compete with other lights essentially um, so when this guy came back, this researcher came back and he told this story about all these fireflies, like, um, lighting up at the same time, nobody believed him until like many, many years later. And then they realized that, yeah, I know this story is like really, I'm not doing a good job with it, am I? Um, but essentially when all of the fireflies lit up at the same time, there was like a 92%, I don't even remember the statistic, but like a really high statistic that they would procreate versus the 8% when they were lighting up on their own. So the whole point of that, and like really long way to tell it, is um, that there's really power in the community and there's power in each other and networking and just being surrounded by like-minded people that all have a common goal um and that's really what we what we're, we do in our challenge groups and what we do in the coaching community and that was something that really resonated with me because i know for me that's something that that's the whole reason why i joined why i joined to be a coach was for the community for all of you so um so that was a big a big takeaway for me and how i can recreate that in my own challenge groups for my people so that was mine okay i'm out <laughs> Yeah, I loved, I loved that story that he, uh, this guy is amazing. Of course, you guys know me. I've already got both of his books. So it's Sean Anchor, and he was just 
unbelievable. So this is the Happiness Advantage and Big Potential are his two books. But the Firefly story was unreal. And I actually have, like yesterday, like I shared with you guys in my live video, I was having a really hard time. I just didn't know how I could, I was having a hard time as a leader. And I belong to sort of a leader's page, so five star and above. And I actually reached out and all of a sudden, within about 15 minutes, I am not kidding. I had 50 coaches. I do not know who they are. We are now in a chat thread together because we're all feeling the same. And that is powerful. I, I led a huge staff for almost 20 years. I never had anyone to talk to except my dad. Like I didn't have anyone that would really understand exactly how I felt. And all I needed to do yesterday was say like one sentence and all of these people, like it felt like I always say, it feels like people just all of a sudden wrap their arms around you and help you through it. And that is how powerful our community is. Like it is unbelievable. So that story really resonated with me. And then it, I kind of saw it in action yesterday, which was amazing. So thanks for sharing that, Heidi. Okay, who wants to go next? I will. Okay, Camille, perfect, thank you. Oh, Camille's gonna go? Okay. Camille, I can't hear you. <laughs> I can see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. I'm sorry, Shelby. I didn't know who was either one of you. Go ahead. We both did it at the same time. Shelby, you go first. Okay, I'll be quick. Um, so this was my second summit, and I almost didn't go to the first summit, but luckily I was, um, luckily enough, I was able to go. And the first summit, like, really blew my mind. And honestly, I spent the entire three days in tears because being in a building and being in an atmosphere where there's 30,000 people who are you is so freaking powerful. And like seeing the speakers speak and like tell their stories, it's one thing to see them on YouTube, you guys, but when you're actually there and you can feel what they're feeling Honestly, like I don't think I've ever cried so much in my entire life. And I don't even think I cried that much when I ended a 10 year relationship. So let's just be serious. It's powerful. Um, and then I feel like I was still just kind of tiptoeing through the whole coaching thing last year. But then this year, like I really felt like I went there with the whole, I own a business mentality and I treated the speakers like I was there for business. So, I mean, like my takeaway was just the fact of needing that extra fuel. And like when you're kind of doubting yourself and doubting if you're really going to be into this and then you kind of go where there's, like I said, 30,000 of you, it really kind of puts that spark back into your fire. And then when you come home, you're like, okay, like I'm either going to do this or I'm not going to do this. And like, it just kind of gives you that extra bit of like validity that sometimes we are like, well, I'm going to take a little break and try to figure out like, if this is what I want to do, like, no, you get your ass to summit and summit's going to tell you like, this is what you need to do. Like, I don't understand anyone who would leave summit being like, yeah, this is like really not for me. Like, I really don't like helping people and I really don't like seeing people change lives and have these entire massive teams of like, life changers and like besties like yeah that's really not for me like no you crazy woman like that is for you and like this is like for anybody so and the fact that like my roommate I saw like flaunt her shit on a freaking stage I was like okay that's gonna be me next year and then I just binge date tonight so that's good times great start Shelby but anyways um yeah it's just honestly incredible like I people have been asking me for days like how I liked indie and I'm like literally become a coach for the simple fact of going and the my other like best takeaway is getting your ass freaking kicked by a super trainer like Sean T kicks my ass every morning because I need to hear him but then like having him kick your ass in real life and seeing it in person I would become a coach hands down just to go to summit once a year and get my ass kicked by a super trainer because it's just it's it hurts 
but it's just to see them live and in person. It's, it's just overall the feeling that you get being in that atmosphere is just indescribable and it's totally worth doing what we do every day. Thanks Shelby. <laughs> You're always, you just always have the words. <laughs> I have to add one thing to Shelby's. I have to say I was a little concerned about driving eight hours <laughs> on Tuesday spending two days alone before anyone else sh really showed up with a 27 year old <laughs> being that I'm 42. I was really concerned actually. And I have to say we had an absolute blast. We actually, I think have a lot in common and we're both a little bit crazy. So it actually worked out perfectly. <laughs> and note to self, you guys, if you're trying to go somewhere, make sure you put the town in the GPS of where you're going or else your GPS is going to send you an hour and a half in the opposite direction. Just saying. Yes, your your start to the trip was definitely adventure. But I mean, that's the cool thing, right? Like there's two people that probably would never have thought that they would become close friends. And that's what happens. It really does. Okay, Camille, you're up. Um, okay, so kind of going off of Shelby, um, because this was actually my like first official summit. Um, I had been well, I went to New Orleans for like 24 hours last summer, but I couldn't like participate in anything really. And um, if you've never been, you just need to go. Like I, I left wanting to bring like my mom, like all my friends, like I just feel like everyone should have a chance to be a part of something like this. Um, I was really naive when I got on, so I had to fly. I wasn't about to drive like 13 and a half hours. Um, and I was really naive because when I got on the plane, there was a girl like in workout leggings in the seat next to me. And I was like, Ooh, I wonder if she's a coach. And it ended up that like the whole plane was beach body. I just didn't even realize it. But when you get to feed off of other people that get it, because I'm not like where I am, there's no one around me that I get to meet up with locally um, that I know that's on my team, like some of you in Canada. And it really is powerful when you get around everyone that just gets it and loves it as much as you do. Um, so, and just to speak on like the finances of trying to get to summit, I will be honest with you. Um, I did not realize how expensive like my plane ticket was going to be and all of that. And we did not really have that money to spend. Um, and it was just a non-negotiable for me to get there. And, um, you know, we made it happen and I've now like decided that this is something that for my business to move forward, I need to be at summit every year. And so if you're really wanting to run with this, like make a point, go ahead and, you know, get your ticket now, go ahead and figure out, all the logistics so that you can be there because it really is worth it. Um, as far as my takeaways, for me, Summit was very much of a gut check um, in a lot of different ways. Um, but for one, I have always sort of wanted to run with this business. And someone said, it's simply a decision to go all in. That's all it is. You just say, I'm doing this. I don't care what gets in my way. I'm doing it. And, um, if you're worried about what other people think, those aren't your people. So for me, I spend a lot of time thinking about what are other people are going to think when I do an Insta story or write a post and it doesn't matter, um, what they think. Um, the other gut check I had, I'm reading from my notes. Um, you better walk wellness if you preach it. So that was like, Okay, like I better commit myself to a program and, you know, use the performance line, use the products, get to know them because that's our business. That's what we're, you know, trying to sell, what we're preaching. And if we're not a product of the product, then no one's going to want to hear what we have to say. Um, another thing I really paid attention to was um, don't ignore your non builders. So, we have all these discount, I have a lot of discount coaches and sometimes I forget about them and I'm not following up with them consistently. So I'm going back through my downline. I'm looking at who my discount coaches are and I'm really trying to take care of them. Um, that was the very first thing I did when I got back from summit was just go through, check on everyone. And then also really focus on making that really great first impression with a new customer. Um, 
I think sometimes it's so easy to just start signing people up with a challenge pack that you just kind of for especially when you start working with cold market people which is sort of where I'm at because you don't know them personally so you're just you know selling them something and then if you're not there to follow up with them you know four to seven days later to make sure all of their stuff came in and how they're feeling then they're just going to fall off they're going to cancel their Shakeology they're not going to ever commit to anything um another thing um Engage with your coaches as your best customer. So those of us that have coaches under us, we need to really be taking care of them, really seeing how we can help them out. Um, and let's see. Oh, big one. So I'm really bad about looking everywhere else to get inspired, wasting my time, you know, reading a lot of other people's posts and following top coaches which is really good when you are trying to learn those basic skills on how to post. But I really struggle with telling my own personal story. Sometimes it might not seem that way if you read a post of mine because I take like two hours to write a post, which some of you know. Um, but spend more time developing yourself and not looking at what other people are doing so much. Um, so, yeah, I think that's... Um, another one, someone is out there waiting for someone like you. So there are always people out there that are wanting to hear from you. So don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, stop thinking and just do. And live out loud. So I've really started just trying to live out loud and stay consistent. Stay consistent with the same things every day. Commit to a program and really streamline your daily activities. Um, I listened to, I finally had a chance to listen to the National Wake Up Call for Monday. And it's, if you haven't watched it yet, you really need to because it really outlines those basic principles, those basic things that we need to be doing every day. Um, but yeah, we, the people there that are top coaches look just like you and me. Like if they can do it, we can do it. And it's seriously possible for everyone on this team. You just have to make that decision to do it. Thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> Those are awesome. Awesome takeaways. I did actually hear a statistic. I was on a corporate call yesterday and um, I think this is a, a stat from Eric Warre. And I think he wrote The Slight Edge maybe. I can't remember what book he wrote, but every single person that goes to Summit and invests in a summit, that's a thousand dollars in your pocket. So what you're going to take away from there, because you're going to implement when you get home, is going to make you a thousand dollars. So sit and spin on that if you didn't, you know, if you feel like you don't want to invest in something like that, the payback is going to be incredible. And if you can get some of your people coming as well, as we know, that will all trickle trickle up, right? Like that's how this business works. So it's, it's important. And if you're here to have a business, it's really important. It would be like me not going to a hair show. It would be me not learning how to do the next trendy haircut. I mean, I wouldn't be in business. So that's how I look at something like Summit. Okay. And, sorry, I'll just like mention off of that. It just like, it just lights this fire. Like it's incredible what, can you guys just all screw? It just like lights this crazy fire. Like our conversations coming home was all about like, what's, what is, what's gonna happen to us at Summit next year? What are we gonna be walking across the stage at? Who on our team is gonna be on that stage? What are we gonna be recognized as? Like we just started setting these like crazy goals, but not only did we not only did we set them, but we could like actually see them because like we spent six hours talking about them on the way home. Like it's just that power of like fire and vision and just like that community feel that just makes this all so much more realistic in achieving. Like I've always known I can achieve it, but there was just something about this summit and like just something on the drive home, even though that was like, yes, like this actually is going to happen. I can feel it now. So 
yeah. Anyways, it's just like the, the fire that will be lit in you. Yeah, totally. Okay. Who else would like to say something? Meg? Oh, perfect. So kind of going off what Camille just said um, about looking at other coaches and kind of looking for inspiration and all those types of things, because I've definitely done that a ton, especially as a very new coach. Um, and so what she said about how there's someone out there waiting to meet someone just like you, I think Angie Bellmark said that, and I like fangirl out to her pretty hard. So the other thing that I wanted to say is what something she talked about. And that was that when she started writing her posts, she wrote them like she was talking to her friend Lauren because she wanted to attract people like her friend Lauren. And so now her friend, like she's an elite coach and the whole idea of attraction marketing and how you want to attract people who are going to be like your best friends. Cause you're going to spend time with them. Like, would you want to be on a call right now with a bunch of people that you didn't really like that much or that you just, that you were just coaches because you wanted to get successful points or get to the next level. Like if you want to spend time with those people, it's just going to make it so much more fun and so much easier. And so just writing posts with those people in mind, I think like it's already helped me generate a ton of them that I'm just waiting to use. So I found that really helpful. And just for me being there um, as again, like a, a, a new coach and seeing coaches around my age or like closer to my age, because obviously like everyone on this team and every, seeing everything they've accomplished is like super inspiring, but seeing people even closer to my age, like Angie or like Chelsea Pearson, who I think might actually be younger than me and she's in the million club. So like just actually seeing them there, like I follow them on Instagram and stuff, but when you're actually in a room with them and you see how human they are. And I think I've heard so many coaches say that, like when you actually see people in real life and you're like, Oh, like she's just a regular person or like seeing coaches in our hotel lobby. And I'm like, you're just, you are just a regular person. So um, just being really inspired by that and being so close to people who have accomplished so much but they're just normal people. So like, why can't they do it? And I forget the woman's name who spoke at the general session the second day. Um, I've seen her in the Beachbody Champions page before and she's a military wife who was talking about all the miscarriages that she'd had. Like miscarriage after miscarriage. And I thought like in my mind, I'm like, is she gonna go on to say that she's pregnant now? Or like there was no real happy ending to her story, but she just figured out a way to deal with it and fail forward. And it was 80 day obsession that helped her, but just hearing so many inspiring stories from people like that, it's like, okay, well, my life seems, I don't know, like I'm not dealing with shit nearly as tough as that. And she's been so successful and helped so many people based on sharing those struggles with people because then it really resonates with them. And it just opens up a whole new floodgate for people who are attracted to you because you're sharing those struggles and sharing those stories um, based on who you really are rather than looking at another post and saying like, Oh, that sounds really good. So I'm going to post their caption under my photo because maybe it will get some traction. So I found that very well. Those are like my biggest takeaways I would say. Yeah. Thanks. Meg. Though, I mean, that's always, and we've all fallen into that trap. I can still fall into that trap that you see another post from another coach that you think is just amazing. And it's easy, right? It's so easy just to copy it and reword it a little bit, but it's never authentically you. It doesn't, it won't ever resonate with your people. And the more the cool thing about all these coaches and all the elite coaches you see on the floor, like none of us, none of them are doing anything different than you guys do. Or we like, there's no secret that they are doing that we don't do every single day. Right? Like they're just maybe doing it more consistently They're They've done it longer. I mean, Melanie Mitro, I loved hers because she's like, yeah, I'm the top coach, but I've also been here for X amount of years. She's put more time in. She's got more experience, but all the vital, the behaviors that you need to do to get to whatever level you want to get to are all the same. There's just nothing different. <laughs> there really isn't. So it's possible for anybody. 
for sure anybody here like we have all the goods there's there's nobody holding anything back on our team like it is all there if you can weed through all the information it is all there okay anybody else want to share oh andrew you're perfect hi everybody um so this was my second summit last year i went to summit um, just because it was close to where I live. I live in Southern Louisiana and I had just become a beach body coach. So when Jen asked me to go, I was like, all right, it was just down the road. So I went and um, it was exciting. There was a lot of woo hoo hoo, you know, rah, rah, rah. And when I left there, I was very rah, rah, rah <laughs> about everything. And I, I did really well, and I worked the business, and I signed up coaches, and I lost 25 pounds. And then life got tough again, and I fell off the bandwagon. So I gained like maybe 10 pounds back, and I've been uh, slowly working my way back into getting into the business and getting back into my health and fitness. And when I went to this summit, the one thing that I really um, took away differently this year was limiting beliefs. Last year I heard it and I was like, oh yeah, if you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen. I'm a high school counselor. I tell kids this all day long, you can do it. Like I didn't really take it seriously until this year. I had a really big aha moment when my husband and I snuck into closing ceremonies and we were watching all of the people with their big transformations and he looked at me and said, why aren't you up there? I was like, stop it. You know, he was clowning about the money. He was like, girl, you need to earn us $100,000. So, but then I really started thinking about it and this whole limiting beliefs thing had kind of been sticking in my head from the sessions. And as we were walking out, I looked at him and I said, you know, I have always been able to achieve what I put my mind to, except for getting control of my health and fitness. And I understand now how limiting beliefs stop us from achieving what we really want to achieve. And because those limiting beliefs catch me every time my business falls off because like you were saying earlier michelle that whenever you don't feel good you don't post well and i'm the same ex i'm the exact same way so once i fall off that bandwagon i start feeling bad about myself i stop posting because i feel like a fraud like why am i going to post these things and i'm i'm sitting here eating fried chicken or whatever <laughs> you know that's it's I just feel like a fraud so I, I found limiting beliefs this year really sunk in because once we once I mess up those beliefs kick in I have a really big inner critic um, that's another word for your limiting beliefs and in counseling and psychology and therapy and whatnot uh, we call it inner our inner critic and you know, we often have to fight off that inner critic. So this is just a big one for me that I understand now from Summit and you know, the speakers talking about it and whatnot, that this is what I need to work on. And if I can work on my inner critic as far as health and fitness goes, and I can improve, my business is going to flourish. I understand that now. That was my big takeaway. And that's such a huge, I mean, I think I had a call with someone last night. I won't name any names, but that's what we talked about for half an hour. It's these silly limiting beliefs that we have. And sometimes when you talk it out with someone else, it's just like, oh my gosh, like why have I let this stand in my way when you can just see it so clearly? And that's obviously, Andrea, what happened. You just heard it. And I mean, it doesn't mean that they don't pop in and out, but the cool thing about this opportunity and about this community is we have things to help us through that. We have people that will talk us through it. You have a coach 
or a friend on the team that will help you through it. We have personal development. Like this is a pretty amazing job when all of these things that can hold us back in life, not just this in life, help with you know we can help each other and then we can help other people as well i mean it's it's kind of think about the impact that we can have on for each other and to other people as well so thank you for sharing that because it's such a huge huge fear limiting beliefs inner critic we all have it i'm not exempt from it either just because i've been around for so long like we all fall into that every once in a while and we, you just have to get yourself out. Like yesterday, I reached out and that's what you guys should be doing too. If that's, if you really want this and there's something like that holding back you back, you need to reach out to someone, a friend or your upline and, and keep going because it's, it's worth it even just for your own life. It's so important. Okay, anybody else? Maybe? Yeah, I have one. Um, so all the things that you guys said, all those things, absolutely. Like Andrea, I really took, um, business away from this one, which was so great because like Shelby, I cried my way through New Orleans. So it was more personal New Orleans where this was more business, which was what I needed. And biggest, biggest takeaway from the whole thing was it's okay to work this as a part-time business. So for me, I keep setting these big goals and I want to be like this big top coach and I want to make all this money and, you know, I'm, I'm fluffing it all, but I kept looking at this big, huge picture of where I wanted to be in three years, right? And what would happen is I would fail at doing something or it would just overwhelm me so much that I just stopped doing the work. I would just become inconsistent with doing the work because I was like, oh, I'm never going to get there. I can't even get success club or I can't sign a coach. And, you know, I would talk myself down and just, you know, be like, oh, okay, I'm never going to get there. So I can't do this. And um, I can't remember the speaker and there was just so many, but there was one that had said, you know what, don't be afraid to set smaller goals to allow yourself to, to, to only look you know, five days in advance, or just look at today, look at what's in front of you right now. What can you do today? What, you know, who can you serve today? Who can you make an imp Whose life can you make an impact on today? And just work towards today. It's okay to set big goals. It's okay to have them in the back of your mind, but don't feel embarrassed or ashamed or like you're unsuccessful if you're only working a part-time business. It's okay to just to, to do that. And you will still be successful because if you stop counting your success by, you know, points per se, and you start counting them by how many people did I actually help, like truly help, not necessarily what the number said on the board, but, you know, maybe you did help five people today and, or this week and you didn't get any points, but you still help five people. That's success, right? Those people have benefited from you being there for them one way or another, right? So that was my biggest, biggest takeaway was stop focusing on the, the future, focus on the present and how can I change someone else's life and my own life today? So that was biggie. That's it. Yeah, that was, I mean, we talked a lot about that, Nikki. And it, I mean, it's so important. And even for myself, I can, you know, I, I always think I should be going up and up and up and up. And at the same time, you have to look at what, what you really, really, truly, truly want. And everybody's goals are going to be different. Just because somebody wants to walk across the stage, that doesn't have to be your goal. That does not have to be your goal. Like maybe something else resonates with you, just getting to your health and fitness or just actually going to summit because it'll be the first time you've ever gone without your husband or whatever. Like there's no there's no rules here. Like there's just no rules. It has to be for you. This is like a personal journey of growth and whatever that is for you, whatever gets you fired up, you have to stay in your lane. Um, it's easy to get taken over by all the fluffy stuff and it's a corporation. It's a business. They set benchmarks for us for a reason. They have to, but you don't have to make that your thing. You don't have to. 
you know, someone that I talked to, I said, why don't you just think about what would the amount of money this month, if you made it, how would that change your family? Like what would, would it be a hundred dollars? So you could take someone out to the movies. You could, you guys could go out to the movies and out for dinner. And it does not have to be a hundred dollars made in challenge pack sales. We got lots of stuff to sell. We've got lots of stuff to share. It doesn't have to be success club points just because that's a benchmark that we talk about. That doesn't have to be your thing. You know, like everybody needs to really think about that because I know now in four years of coaching, lots of people stop coaching because they see all these big numbers and ranks and it, it takes them down. And that's not what this team is about. That is not what we are about at all. It has to be what is right for you and your family and your dreams and your goals. So uh, thanks for sharing that, Nikki. I'll say on the flip side of that, though, that's always another big takeaway that I take is it's never too late. If you're just a part-time coach or you have been too afraid to go all in or whatever, you all of a sudden hear of coaches that have been in the business four, five, six years who all of a sudden something clicks and they're like, now I'm all in. And so it's also never too late. Like on the flip side of that, you can at any time decide you're going to grow and go big. Yeah. I think the whole point is you have to think about you. You have to get in your own head and not look at everybody else and decide what is right right now. I can tell you what was right two years ago for me is not right now. It's changed. So you just have to look inside of yourself and really truly decide what you want to work for right now. And the thing is, there's no right or wrong. It's just all what is feels really right to you. At the base of everything, we're about helping other people. We're about staying accountable to our own stuff. We're about finding joy and having fun. And wherever range that stays for you or wherever you want to go with that, if you want to walk across the stage next year, then go for it. But if it's just, that's not your deal, you just want to earn a little extra money or you're just here for the community, it's all good. Like it's all good. For sure. But you just have to ask yourself those honest questions. I saw someone raising their hand. Rachel, maybe? Did anyone else want to say anything that was at Summit? That was me. Okay, cool. That was me. Um, it was my first time at Summit. And um, I'll just say really quickly, Sean Archer, he said something that kind of goes along with what you were saying. Make sure that your happiness is on the right side of your success. Make sure that happiness isn't following success. And I'll say to you guys, I was blown away. It was very professional, the, the whole summit experience. And um, the $130 that they're charging for you to go to summit is a joke. Like, I, I, as soon as I got home and I was on Wi-Fi, I bought my next ticket. I was like, 130 bucks for that? For sure. So get there next year. It's amazing. Yeah, it definitely is. And Get it at $130, please. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and save somebody. Yeah, it, at the, like, of all the speaking and everything I heard, Sean, this guy, like, resonated so much with me because my husband will tell you I'm, I'm never happy. Like, I'm just never happy. Like, I get Success Club 100, and I don't even take one millisecond to be happy. I start worrying about the next month. I get a coat, like it's just, it's actually like a sickness. And this resonated so well with me that it's, it's like not healthy and it's not good and I need to make some changes. So it was a good hi. deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> want to say hi to everybody? <laughs> okay. Does anybody else want to share anything? I just wanted to add one more thing. Sorry. Um, I forgot to say this before was I was blown away by the number of new names that I heard speaking at summit and walk being recognized, like walking across the stage. Like there was new five star, nine star, 10 stars that I'd never heard of, um, in Beachbody. So it just goes to show you that there's a lot of people 
that are getting successes that we might not hear. Like we look at the Melanie Mitros and the Bonnie Engels and we think, oh my gosh, like, of course they're where they are because they have all this momentum, but you kind of forget about all the other coaches that you, you don't really know of that are also creating momentum and having success. And it, there's enough success for all of us. And I think that's, that's always loud and true whenever you see new people pop up and I'm like, Oh, where did she come from? She's 15 star. I never even heard of her. <laughs> um, and so I, that really fuels me because sometimes you can get caught up with, well, of course, Bonnie Engel is up there because she's, she's always going to be successful because she has the brand behind her now. And Melanie, the same thing that you kind of forget of all the other coaches that are still grinding and still hustling and doing all the vital behaviors that they need to do to be successful. And we just might not know about them. Um, so that for me was really eye opening. Um, and how people can jump like Emily Fav or whatever Favre, she went 15 star and I think um I because I stalked her for a little bit because I was I don't know her story was really like compelling and um she was like a five star um earlier in the year so she went from five to 15 star really really quickly which just goes to show you that you can just really create momentum in this business and in a short period of time if you are willing to do it do the work right she was actually two star in January. She went five to 15 within six or seven weeks. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. I mean, there's like coaches you, you will have never heard of, never heard of in the million club and 15 star, 12 star. I mean, yeah, they're not like, you know, we see the social media People, Delaney, stop putting that stupid thing in my face. <laughs> I, it was, it was me all along. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, like there's so many people, new, <laughs> new and old, like some coaches that you won't even know. Like they've been actually, I in this message thread I'm in, there's a woman that I've never heard of. She's been a coach for ten years since the very beginning. So it's crazy how many people are doing their thing under the radar like they are not social media icons in any way they're just doing this and they're very successful so that's the thing you just do it in your own way okay can i say something just as like a non-summit but yes. last year and yeah. got so much out of you guys sharing um first of all i want to say i had the biggest case of fomo ever um this last week but i decided to channel it positively and really focus on myself and turning it inward and like what can I do with this because I'm obviously feeling this way because I want to be there and um I'm not and why I feel so strongly it's not because I like envy this person or that person or whatever it's because that community that I've surrounded myself with almost two years online or not has brought me so much that I never really dug deep before and really realized how much. So I wrote some notes. Um, I, I really thought about like be myself because like when you go to summit and like I saw a few people, there's like 20, 30,000 of everyone, all different people. So like, why can't I just be me? And so those things they talked a lot about on social media, which I'm sure is like some little about is just believing in yourself and not believe in the product. So obviously I believe in the product enough to use it for almost two years but not really enough to like share it really confidently like what is it really doing for me so um really believe in the process so and then so i'm like why am i doing this like why do i really care and it all came down to like it really does bring me joy like my workouts and want to really relieve my stress and my anxiety like i'm a direct support worker with mental health developmental disabilities and i don't think i could do my job anymore if it wasn't for my workouts every morning and my shakes bringing me energy and clarity and me feeling like I needed to share that to help others. And um, I just need to find those people. <laughs> and so like, I'm now I'm like, who, who am I speaking with? Well, I'm speaking to me. And like, I never really wanted to focus on me before because I was like, like, I'm not important. I don't really believe in myself or like that person. I always thought myself at a different level than someone else or how to leave like many beliefs that I really didn't like noticed for so um, it makes me feel good like I said um, helping others makes me feel good 
like when I can actually do it, like I feel this good working out every day and focusing on my health when I can, like why wouldn't others not feel that way too? And, and then just like what you've been saying in the last like 10 minutes is like, I was seeing all the success and all these possibilities. And like, I definitely want possibilities. And, but why do I do this day in, day out and keep at it when it hadn't been super successful? Like, why? Why do I keep doing it? Because of all these other factors. Like, I can do it part time. I can enjoy my job. My job might be hard day to day, but it's that much harder without this. Or it's easier. Like, if I do a workout in the morning and I clear my head and I go in with that clear head, my job is a lot easier than it would have been without it. And so I can just do this part time and, yeah, make some extra money, help a bunch of people. Maybe when I really do believe in myself and I, really do have that more confidence more confidence and build my community that I can be more successful and I can grow it because I've found out who I truly am and so I just say because of what you guys have shared over the last week and I decided instead of just being jealous to like really listen um, I'm starting to believe in myself and then in turn like believe in the possibilities of this and not just like in successful points but like the possibilities like yeah I'm starting to start like four and I want as many people as I can to come in with me because I really believe that that program and three mindset can really make us have the best summer ever by the end and like those kind of things like so I just wanted to say that like you guys Sherry isn't just for your prospects it's for like everybody else who couldn't be there I was still a lot of self-doubt and in the family wedding this weekend and next weekend I just thought it was too much fun, but I'm sure I could have made it happen if I just believed in myself a little more. So now to the next event. <laughs> That's so awesome. I talked really fast. I was like nervous. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's that's really good. Cause I I I believe that if you guys dig into like the recordings and you dig into our posts and feel our energy, you can get a very similar experience you can get all the takeaways there's there was nothing like secret that was only for people that paid the hundred dollars to go like it's all there if you take the time to watch it and you take the time to really think about it um do i think that there's i think the powerful thing about being at the summit is us all being together i really do because as our team grows we're not all in the same area, like we're not. So the reality is there's only a couple times that there's even an option for us all to be together. And let me tell you, it is friggin' powerful when you see that picture of all of us in our black dresses or whatever, it is cool to all be in the same room and do a power hour in the morning together and go do the workout together. It's really Awesome. There's what I really kept thinking is like, where else do you ever get this kind of positivity and energy? You even take the business out of it. Yeah. Where do you get, where do you get that? You don't get that with your work colleagues or your friends. Your yeah. friends are busy taking care of their families and working their shift shift work jobs or whatever, right? Like all opposite hours. You yeah. don't get that unless you do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. So thank you for sharing that. It was awesome, Miranda. Thank you. Okay, so this is getting super long. I was going to go through sort of the, the calendar from now until 2019, but let's just save it. There's key things that we need to know right now. First being this Saturday is a live lift workout. Okay, so I'll do a post about it in the team page, but basically what is happening on all social media platforms. So, um, the Beachbody page on Facebook and Instagram, Joel Freeman's page on Instagram and wherever, like all the platforms, Joel and his crew for Lift 4 will come in live and do that workout. So do that preview 30 minute workout. So you should be inviting to this. This is really cool. Um, it's 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, like from my understanding, Heather, you're here. Can you help me with this from my, like, is it not that you're just going to go to that social media page and you're just going to follow along the workout with him on the social media page? They haven't really made it very clear to be honest with you. Um, because it sounds weird. Like how would they, 
host it like in front of you like that on all these different platforms. So I don't know if they expect us to do the free workout that's in the back, that's in the uh, front of the paywall or they, or he's just going to do it right there. It's really not clear right now because yeah. somebody else said on one of the team beach body pages that we're going to be working out, but while we're working out, he's going to be doing a Q and a like while we're working out. And so I'm like, is he doing it after or during? Cause nobody's yeah. going to be asking questions if we're working out. Right. I think it's after like, I spent a lot of friggin' time on the FAQ today trying to figure this out. Me I don't too. know. Um, I, I'm like thinking that you're going to log in to say the beach body page and Joel and his crew are going to be there and you're going to be able to follow along the workout live then. And he's going to do a Q and a after this is what I think. I don't know for sure, but all I do know for sure is invite to it. <laughs> Cause it's, like, it's very cool. They've never done anything like this before. It's another way to get people to see that workout, do it live, see the community, all that kind of stuff. So that is this Saturday, June 30th, 8 Pacific, 11 Eastern. And then of course we go right into Lyft. So July 16th is when all that early access is available. It will be on Beachbody On Demand. So hopefully your challenge groups are set up. Like ideally your prep week will start on the 9th and then you'll move right into the 16th. If you're still having trouble describing lift four and what this is, let me simplify this. Do you, are you a Silver City person or do you like Netflix, okay? So if you are a Silver City person and you see that a movie's coming out and you just cannot wait to watch that movie and you go and you pay the $50 and you buy the popcorn and you do all of that to see that movie, those are your customers that are gonna buy the early access to Lyft 4. It's exactly the same as going to Silver City to see the movie. If you're more of a Netflix person and you think, you know, this looks cool, but I don't wanna pay for it. I wanna watch it on Netflix. You're, anyone with Beachbody On Demand is gonna get Lyft 4, but not until October, okay? Just like the movies. And I literally say that in most messages about Lyft 4. Of course you're gonna get it. Like I get tons of messages. I have bleach body on demand. Why don't I get Lyft 4? Of course you're gonna get Lyft 4. Oh my gosh, of course you are. You're gonna get it in October. Or, and I'll say, are you a Silver City girl like me? Cause I have major FOMO over anything. Or are you okay with just waiting for it when it comes? So if you're still having trouble explaining that, that works really well for me. They understand it instantly. And most of them say, oh my God, I got FOMO, I'm Silver City. So that's how I'm explaining it. Um, I think that's where I will end. There is a ton of stuff coming, tons of stuff. I, and I'm sure you've seen it. Shanti has a new program, Pumpkin Shakeology, something for all our US people. It will not be in Canada. It will not be in Canada. Okay. So pumpkin flavored pumpkin spice. I don't even know, but that's going to, so probably what they're going to do is have flavored Shakeology like Starbucks now, but I don't know if it'll ever come to Canada guys. It just takes so long to get things approved here. So I doubt that it'll ever be for us here, but for us and we all have us customers. Um, so that's going to happen in the fall. Um, certification for 2B Mindset will happen in September. I am all over that. Like, I cannot wait for that. So, you know what? Next team call in a couple weeks, we'll go over the calendar. Um, I will always post in the team page. Fitnik Nation, you should check into every single day. I post in there all the time. I do live videos. That's where the information is. This team has grown way too big for me to individually tell people information. So if you want to know something, it's probably there somewhere, okay, or in our message pods. But right now it's Lyft. It's all Lyft, and then we'll move into what's coming next, which is Shift Shop during the summer, Pumpkin Spice, 2B Mindset, and then Shanti will take us from Christmas into the new year. So tons of amazing stuff coming. Okay. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Does anyone have anything else that I'm forgetting or they want to add before we say good night? Okay. Oh, Meg, I see your hand. 
Just something really quickly. I feel like it's kind of the perfect way to end it. Um, I think Kim Carver said in the last workshop, um, like for those of us who were at Summit and took so many notes, is don't let that notebook full of those notes just be a tomb. That collect dust because they're way too valuable for that. That's it. Perfect way to end. I have nothing more to add. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thank you.